So today I am here with uh, Dr. Zoe Harcombe, who is an author, a researcher, and has a PhD in uh, public health and nutrition. And um, I was looking over her site the other day and I saw some really weird stuff about <laughs> vegetables. The whole five a day thing could be a con and maybe vegetables aren't what we thought they were. Well, I, I can't even get my head around this. This makes no sense to me. And I'm going to take a lot of convincing. So let's see if Zoe can convince us about vegetables. <laughs> So Zoe, <laughs> what you what an intro. explain yourself, please. Okay, so I did some research for an obesity book back in 2009. And one of the things that I researched was where five a day com came from. And my research led to the conclusion, um, fact, it is trademarked by the National Cancer Institute of the US. So that's the organization that kicked off the interest in five a day. Um, right. Another fact is that there was a meeting held in 1991 in California, and it was a meeting of the National Cancer Institute of the US and an organization called the Produce for Better Health Foundation. And the members of that organization were members that would benefit from humans eating more fruits and vegetables. So I think it was the Blueberry Association, the Potato Association. There were a couple of logistical firms who move vegetables and fruits around uh, pr primarily the US. And they were all part of that. Now, I don't know the details of what went on in that meeting, but you very much get the impression because five a day was an output from that meeting that they were having a good meeting and then they sit down at the end and say, OK, let's get an output. Um, what should we do? I don't know. Why don't we mandate or recommend that people eat a certain number of fruits and vegetables a day? Great idea. How many should that be? Three? Mm, not very ambitious. Six? Mm, perhaps a little bit too many. What about five? It's the number of digits on one hand. Lovely. Let's go with that. And I don't think it's any more scientific than that. There is certainly no evidence for it. So if you go but on my... Get, but let's just get one thing clear. Vegetables are good for you, right? I mean, uh, I, I believe that. I'm bought <laughs> into that. Are you telling me they're not? They're okay, but there are better foods and there are worse foods. Like um, what? What's better than a vegetable? Liver, red meat, oily fish, dairy products, eggs, especially the yolks. Um, so I, I look at food. I'm a mathematician. I did maths at Cambridge. I love numbers. Um, I like nothing better than a spreadsheet. So if somebody says to me, what is nutritious? I go back to first principles. So I say, right, what do human beings need to eat? What is an essential nutrient? An essential in nutrition means something we must eat. The body doesn't make it. So the essential nutrients are essential fats uh, essential proteins, which we know as amino acids, and then we have 13 vitamins, and we have a questionable number of minerals, we could debate, is it 16 or 20? I don't care, but we know them as iron, zinc, um, copper, magnesium, calcium, um, and so on. And of course, we know the B vitamins, C vitamins, and, and the fat soluble vitamins. But aren't these vitamins mostly in vegetables? I mean, mm. I know, no? No, no, not at all. So not only do we need essential fats, complete protein, vitamins and minerals, they come in different forms. So, for example, essential fats, um, we need omega-3 and omega-6. And within omega-3, we, we need them in a particular form. And the body wants them in the forms called DHA and EPA. And that's what you get from oily fish, particularly. ALA is something that you might get from flax seeds. So in nutrition as a generalization, when there are two forms of a nutrient, so for example, vitamin A comes in the form of retinol, it also comes in the form of carotene, retinol comes from the animal foods, carotene comes from the plant foods, I'm afraid in every situation the body wants the form that comes from the animal foods. Now there are conversions that are possible. Um, so carotene, for example, can be converted into retinol, but that doesn't happen in everyone. And I will tell you a personal story here. I found out the hard way that I am a poor converter of carotene. Um, so I dated someone for a while who was a vegan. He happened to be the cook in the house. I kind of, I was vegetarian at the time, but I hadn't realized I'd lapsed into veganism. And I ended up in Moorfields Eye Hospital way too quickly. And I didn't make the connection. Yeah. I didn't realize. And the optician should have said to me, OK, for your eyesight to have changed, something must have changed. So what's changed? And every, 
every particularly young female who walks into Moorfields High Hospital should be asked, what do you eat? Do you eat oily fish? Do you what eat weren't you eat? What weren't you eating? So at the time, having lapsed into veganism, I was not eating any animal foods. So, so before you'd been eating eggs? So before I'd been eating eggs and dairy. And so dairy. I had been yeah. having milk. Um, I, I particularly liked a Starbucks a day, a milky coffee. Um, even that had stopped. Um, in the evening, I would happily have had an omelette or an egg or a cheese based, um, a moussaka with a good cheese topping with some eggs in as well. And, and all of I mean, that. I do think that eggs are a superfood. Would you yes. agree? Yes, I mean, I, I, do. I, eat, I eat a load of eggs. I yeah. Eat a lot more than I than one is advised to. I mean, I eat them nearly every day. Love yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So I, I'm still finding this. I, I've never heard this before. And I know <laughs> that a lot of people watching this video are going to be deeply shocked and, and slightly outraged. So, okay. So let's look at a lovely salad. You've got green lettuce. You've got tomatoes. You've got olives. You've got peppers. You've got radishes. Um, okay, you might have a, bit of, have a bit of protein in there, some chicken or whatever. And then you just have a piece of steak. Are you saying that there's going to be more vitamins in that piece of steak? Oh, not even comparable. I mean, I was listening to you read reel off the lettuce and the tomatoes and the peppers, and I'm thinking, hmm, tasty, crunchy, tasty, crunchy. Virtually no nutrients of any value. They're just not. And, and all I do, I put together a spreadsheet and I say, right, let's list the essential fats. Let's list, list the complete amino acids, a complete protein. But what and about vitamin C? What about vitamin C? Does a steak have vitamin C? Um, liver has more vitamin C than an apple. Four yeah, times as much. Listen, they're not, a lot of us are not going to eat any liver. <laughs> I, I hate mean, liver. I, I'm not, not going to eat liver either. either. I, I, I eat eggs, chicken and fish. I haven't yeah. eaten red meat. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons I gave up red meat is as a child, I was I was forced to eat liver and oh. I absolutely hated it. So that yeah. when I became a grandma, I thought I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. I so hate I, it. Too. I will never be eating liver. I can assure yeah. you. Me too. So, that, that's two of us. Oh. But just factually, when you put, and I've done it, you, I mean, look on my website. If you put in five a day, it should take you to some of these blogs. Um, so I put in things like an apple, a carrot, banana I can't remember the, the five fruits and fish yeah, that yeah. I choose and then I choose five foods that I know to be extraordinarily packed with nutrients so one is chicken liver hate it um, sardines might be another one sunflower seeds will be I know that is a plant food but it's really rich in vitamin E um, and I look at an egg or a dairy so or seeds, or seeds and nuts Ah, oh, seeds and nuts are really interesting foods so people who want to lose weight seeds and nuts are not necessarily your friend um, because here's a fascinating factoid about food. Nature provides proteins in everything. OK, so other than table sugar and oils, protein is in everything. Proteins in lettuce, apples, bread, right up to steak and eggs. So nature basically provides carb proteins, which are things that vegans eat. So that's your um, grains, legumes, beans, pulses, vegetables and fruits. And nature provides fat proteins which are the things that vegans don't eat so that's your meat fish eggs and dairy now there's only a couple of foods where nature puts fat and carbohydrate in the same food together and that's nuts and seeds and nuts particularly think about it if you sit near a bowl of nuts you can't stop if you start you can't stop so it's fat and carbohydrate and protein it's fat and carbo it's, everything's got protein in yeah so the nuts particularly have got fat and carbohydrate now the fake food companies have worked out that fat and carbohydrate is a combo that we humans cannot resist. No, so I, I love that. Exactly. So if I say to you, right, have dry crackers on their own and stop when you've had enough, you'd stop quite quickly. If I say yeah. to you, have cheese or butter on its own and stop when you've had enough, you'd stop quite quickly. If I now say to you, have crackers and cheese, you've got no limit. No, I love a cracker and cheese. Yeah, so that's why nuts are the unique natural food provided by mother nature that you might want to avoid if you're trying to lose weight if you're not trying to lose weight there's some really great nutrients That's just, but is it because of the carbohydrate content it's the mix it's the mix it's because we did not evolve to cope with that mix but so, surely our, our, our you know our, our caveman ancestors would have eaten nuts surely nuts and seeds are something they would have eaten absolutely if they found any at any point that would have been one of the foods that they foraged but they didn't have weight problems they didn't have to worry about that it was it was nature's perfect food but, but most they of had the weight time, problems and yet they were eating nuts yeah but because they're not eating all the other processed food that we're eating today 
So they would still only have got nuts in season. Most of the year, they would have been catching an animal or foraging stuff that was in season. And the stuff that was in season, by definition, was not available all year round. Whereas we can the stuff that was in season, wouldn't that have been uh, vegetables and fruit? Yes, but it's in the autumn before you go into the cave for the winter. So they need to fatten up at that point because yeah. they've got to make it through to the spring when they're going to come out and try and catch the animals again. But they were eating vegetables and fruit. If they could get them, if they could get them. But if they could get an animal instead, that would have been so much more valuable to them. They could not have survived on vegetables and fruits. They so need just getting to back to the nut thing, is it because so... Is it the calorific content, content because of the carbohydrate and the fat? I'm not so worried about calories. Because, because no. we, no, I'm not either. Is, yeah. it, is it because we overeat? Is it because yeah. we eat too, too much? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've always gone on the assumption that, you know, fat uh, doesn't make you fat. It helps you burn fat if it's, if it's good fat, if it's good yeah. quality fat. So if I'm ever trying to lose weight, I never, ever count calories. I gave that up. Absolutely. You know, I did a diet book as well. And we, you know, calories went out the window. Yeah. So it was all about the foods that you consume. Um, yeah. And I always do eat quite a lot of nuts. I have to say I eat them every day because I also thought they were incredibly healthful for you. They do have a good range of nutrients um, and seeds also have a good range of nutrients, but they will always be beaten by an animal food An animal food will always win a nutrient competition. So actually, um, and I know in a previous uh, video, we talked about the lion diet, where there are these, there are these growing number of people now who only eat meat and they don't eat any vegetables at all. So, um, is that, an, in effect, a healthy diet to just eat meat? It gives you everything you need. I, I wouldn't do it. I'm like you. I would hate it. Uh, I love plants. I it, just it, don't... Is, is chicken and fish counted in that? Um, some people do. So I know um, Sean Baker, for example, would eat eggs. He'd eat salmon. He'd eat fish. He'd eat meat. Right. And he, he'd eat any meat. Um, but I think we mentioned Jordan Peterson in, in that um, session. And he only eats steak. Um, yes, you I'm were aware. saying that he had to give up vegetables because he worked out that they weren't agreeing with him. They were yeah. affecting him in what way? Um, they make him depressed and anxious. And I've had somebody from the nutrition world stay with me, Dr. Georgia Reed. And she, in fact, she's just got a book that's come out. Um, you should talk to her. She's talking about the impact that plants can have on some people's mental health. And some people... Um, they just don't get on with plants. Um, thank goodness I do. Thank goodness you do. But some people just don't and they feel worse when they consume them. I've never heard of that. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, this goes against everything we know and have been taught and told to leave a, a, a healthy lifestyle. So if if one cuts, I mean, would you suggest that people cut down on their vegetables and just eat more animal protein? I'd say make sure you're getting the foods that you need for the nutrients that you need. So make sure you're getting some of the following, red meat, oily fish, full fat dairy, eggs, especially the yolks. So make full, sure. you would say full fat dairy is a good thing. Yeah, because absolutely. Because, you, you know, you know where, where, where do you stand on dairy? Because some people say dairy is just not good for you. And then I look at the nutritional value of dairy and think, how am I not supposed to consume this when it's got the full suite of B vitamins, it's got calcium, it's got phosphorus, it's got vitamin d it's got everything other than vitamin c that i need they, so they say only calves should be having milk but that uh, it's not good it, you know that it, it it creates all kinds of problems and um isn't there a higher association with dairy and cancer doesn't it raise your cancer risk no i looked at this on i think it was breast cancer so i mean i don't have this on the top of my head but i yeah. would look at that kind of thing on my website. So if you put in breast cancer and dairy, I do remember looking at it once actually for a, a friend. Yes, because um, I, I, I heard that there was a higher risk for cancer uh, with, with dairy. Yeah, I mean, so much of this is that we are being driven towards a plant-based diet. Um, people want us having cereal instead of eggs. They want us having ready meals instead of steak and salad for dinner. And there just seems to be a massive agenda going on. And the plant foods, of course, are the processed foods. They tend, you know, people following a plant-based diet can't live on salad and tomatoes and peppers. They are having yeah. these ready meals. Well, do you know, it's very interesting because, you know, you know, veganism is huge now. So this 
this is going to be awful news for all the vegans out there and the you know I, I, vegetarians as well but um oh my goodness because you know people are very attached to their veganism and it's a, it's a huge growing movement although i do worry you know um you know a lot of these um these meat alternatives are highly processed and from what i can tell very unhealthy foods mm -hmm. so i mean if i personally became a vegan i actually wouldn't eat those i would still s stick to sort of the natural foods but <sighs> But you're saying that by eating that diet and, and not having any eggs or anything and being completely vegan and not having any dairy, it's going to be, you're just not going to get the nutrients that you actually need. Yeah. If you were eating um, meat. So if you Google my name and put yes. in the word, should we be vegan? There's a half an hour presentation that I did at a conference where right. I go through, having been vegetarian, I know why right. people choose that. And it is very much yes. a, sort of a lifestyle choice. And yes. I go through the issues and I go through the nutrients that you cannot get if you are purely vegan. If you do not eat animal foods, you cannot get B12, you cannot get retinol, you cannot get D3 other than from the sun. You've really got to work hard to get complete protein and then you don't get the right ratio of the amino acids. You don't get the right form of the essential fatty acids. You don't get the DHA, you don't get the EPA, you don't get heme iron. You don't get the most absorbable form of zinc. If you are not supplementing carefully, you will get sick. It's just I, have one I have one last question on this. So, you know, for a few years now in the health world, they've been saying, you know, up your protein, you know, eat vegetables, eat, make sure you've got enough healthy fat, eat, I mean, meat, uh, full fat, you know, healthy fats. But now I've noticed what they're saying is you're eating too much protein. So I've seen this come up in a lot of um, articles and that, that saying that people are now eating too much protein, which I'm finding interesting. So where, so I'm, I'm guessing that you wouldn't agree with that. I don't agree with that for one of the reasons that we said earlier, that protein is in everything. Protein is in everything from lettuce through to steak. So nature has put it into food in a pretty consistent amount and if you look at uh, um, most diets protein forms about 15 to 20 percent of any natural diet so unless you are doing something unnatural and in my view unnatural is white fish and not oily fish skinless chicken breasts and not skinned chicken and the rest of the chicken and and egg whites the stupid stuff they do in california so they have the egg mm. white omelets and throw away the yolks yeah, yeah. or yeah. protein shakes which people in gymnasiums are doing or whatever unless you're doing some stupid stuff like that and it really is stupid you are going to get the right amount of protein whether you're following a vegetarian diet and you are still eating eggs and dairy or whether you're following a carnivore diet because the carnivores don't fear the fat so when the carnivore is having the ribeye steak they're not cutting out the marble bits right. of fat in the so you're saying when you have chicken, I mean, I do eat, I do eat white chicken breast, but I don't normally have the skin on, but you're saying you should have the you skin should. on. That, that's where you get your fat soluble vitamins. So if you're not consuming fat, you don't get enough fat soluble vitamins. So the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K are found in fat. That's but can you get got... your fat from other sources, you know, mm -hmm. olive oil, coconut oil, or so, does it have to be animal fat? Yeah, olive oil would give you vitamins E and K. It won't give you A and D. So then you would tend to want to balance um, dairy, for example, to give you more of the A and D. Right. But, um, whereas milk is low on E and K. So it's again, it's about having yeah. a variety of good foods in your diet. I mean, you'd be better off having the olive than the olive oil, because to me, olive oil is processed olives. Really? And, and, and they, they say olive oil is like the healthiest food on the planet. It's really not all that. It's got no complete protein. It's got no, no minerals. It's got two vitamins. Look at the new Google nutritional value of Diet, olive oil. That where people live for, you know, a hundred years or more and they're all yeah, eating and olive oil. No, you, you know why people in the Mediterranean live a hundred years. You've been to the Mediterranean. The yeah. sun shines, the sea is blue. The lifestyle is slow. They stand by the side of the road and have an espresso and play backgammon. It's the <laughs> lifestyle. The uh, olive oil has nothing to do with it whatsoever. And they don't eat, they don't have corner shops. They don't have convenience Stores. Yeah, they cook. They, they don't cook, have, they tend to cook from scratch, don't they? Exactly. They it's, it's their overall lifestyle. It really isn't the olive. You know, give olive oil to people in Glasgow, living on you know ten dollars a month or whatever. Yeah, and it's going 
going to make no difference to their longevity whatsoever. And that's what the test would need to be to show that olive oil was actually a game changer. But if somebody is, I know there's protein and everything, but obviously meat, chicken, fish is mostly protein, right? No, no. Um, so I've got some great slides. Um, again, I use at conferences. So when people say, dietitians say, oh, meat is full of saturated fat. And I want to sort of scream at the television. So take a 100 gram piece of steak, because then we can put it into percentages. So 71 of those 100 grams is water. OK, now the minute you cook it, obviously you lose some water, but just like human beings, we're yeah. mostly water. We're 60 percent water. So 71 grams of water, about 21 grams is protein and then the remainder is fat. And of the I mean, there's a bit of ash and minerals or whatever. So there's seven grams of fat in a typical steak that I took from the U.S. nutrition database and two of those seven grams of saturated fat. So saturated fat is literally the last thing that a steak is. And fat is the second last thing that a steak is. And then, yes, there is some protein. There's no carbohydrate, which is why it has nothing to do with diabetes. But real food is mostly water. Fish is about 65, 70 percent water. Vegetables, yeah. fruits, of course, are almost entirely water. They're 90, 95 percent yeah. water. So fruit is basically sugar with a couple of nutrients and nowhere near as many as you might think. Wow. And I, I think there's going to be a riot. After <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm actually shocked. And I, yeah, here was me thinking I knew quite a bit about nutrition. So um, I, I don't, I, I think people are going to be really shocked by what you're saying. It's, I'll come it, back again. And, and, and I think you, I, you know what, the I'm, questions. Gonna, I'm, going to, I'm going to, exactly. I'm going to put this video out. I'm going to see people's reactions, their questions. <laughs> You know, if you if you're watching this and you have any questions, just let me know and we'll get Zoe back and we'll take her on with all our questions. Yeah, this is not um, my opinion, by the way. I mean, I, I mean, this is just nutritional facts. I well, really don't care what people eat. I'm happy with what I eat. I'm not I haven't got some campaign against. You don't have an agenda. Or, no, I love fruit. I would eat fruit all day long. Yeah. But I just, if I have a piece of fruit, I know that I could be eating something more healthy. I know that I'm basically just eating sugar. Hate it. I'd love to eat dates all day long. Dates have got more tof and more sugar than toffee. I know. I know. I love dates. But, but but they are good for you, aren't they? No. What do they give you? What do they give you? Complete protein? No. Essential fats? No. Oh. Vitamins? Not that many. Must have vitamins, surely. Not so many. Honestly, I'll, I'll send you some of my spreadsheets and then you can just see it for yourself. It's just black and white. It's wow. In, it's, you can't come to any other conclusion. This is I wish it weren't. Oh, well, I'm just <laughs> shocked. I don't know what to do now. I just don't know what to do. I wish I ate meat. Oh, why did I ever give up meat? What a shame. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Back. I All right, well, well, thank you so years. much. And we're definitely going to have to have you back on this one. Pleasure. Thanks.